written to Hebrews. Keep your Bibles opened. And we're going to meditate upon chapter 20 later on. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Amen. Did everybody find? Let's read together. Não, Hebreus. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. The church may be seated. And keep your Bible opened. And the gospel according to John chapter 20 as well. Well, brethren, we are studying last, recently about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. It's a very important moment. The death at the cross and most important even is the resurrection at the third day. In the chapter 20 of the book of Hebrews, how was the behavior of the ones that were following Jesus? We can see that the death of Jesus brought to all of them, disciples, followers, the ones that were close to him, great sadness. Even for some, a deception, frustration, disappointment, some like some feeling like loss. Not only because Jesus has died, but also they lost the incentive. Everything that Jesus has spoken to them. It is good to remember that Jesus never lied to anyone, never deluded anyone, because every time he spoke about his death, right after he mentioned his resurrection, there was no reason for doubt. The prophets as well spoke about Jesus. We can read what the letter to the book of Hebrew mentioning what God used all the prophets to announce the life and the death of Jesus and his resurrection. Interesting that Israel kept only the letter, just the history. They forgot everything that was prophesied by God through the prophets and everything supposed to fulfill. Now we see here in the chapter 20 of the, bus, the book of John, the gospel, and the other apostles also, all the gospel writers, uh, about the resurrection of Jesus. Details about what happened at the third day. Jesus said at the third day that he will resurrect. He will rise again. Here we see a group of women that were with Jesus and they went to the tomb where the body of Jesus was placed and everybody saw it and at the end, in the beginning of the Saturday, at the end of Friday, you saw the Bible describing the rush to prepare the body of Jesus and to place in the tomb that was not his because it was about to finish the day and the, the Shabbat was about to begin.
And it was requested by all the Pharisees and the principals that the body of Jesus was watched and well guarded because they say they're going to do something. They're going to be sneaky. Be careful. So a squad of high-end soldiers who detach to, to save the tomb of Jesus. Imagine the Roman soldiers. Where are you going? I'll be guarding a body of someone that died. So someone was determined to to guard and to protect the body of someone that a lot of people were talking about to prevent a rumor. So the soldiers were there to make sure nobody could steal the body and there was a, a big stone guarding the tomb and while the woman decided to go there with the oils and the essences and all the products to apply in the body of Jesus they went there at the first day of the week which is Sunday to apply all these spices to preserve the body and their main focus was to find out who removed the, the stone from the tomb so we can do that. So all the story we heard, all that happened, there's no way for the body of Jesus to be stolen. It's confirmed and attested that his body was there, the, the, the stone was there with a seal and the soldiers were there to prevent anything to happen from happening with the body of Jesus. And when they arrived, the stone was already removed. So they entered in the tomb and they see that there's nobody there. The main concern of them was they didn't think at all about his resurrection. In any moment they thought about what he said prophetically. Did he resurrect? Maybe. So they went to Peter, John. John was the youngest, so he he rushed, and he was younger than Peter, so he arrived before Peter. So the age comes for everybody. So Peter couldn't follow John. John arrived first. And John saw the, the linen moved. Peter arrived right after. Mary, the, both Mary, the Magdalene and the other Mary, the one that had a, a twisted life and Jesus put it straight. Jesus gave salvation and transformed. So their lives were like, transformed and everybody knew that they followed Jesus for three years, seeing and watching, witnessing the messages, the, the, the miracles and all the lessons, all the sermons about the kingdom of heavens and the kingdom of God. So the multiplication of bread and the fish, the marvelous fish day, 
that when they they spend all night and they didn't fish anything, Jesus says, throw the net on the other side, and there was marvelous moment. The the the, the ship almost almost sank because of the number of fish. So now Jesus died and two of the disciples decide to run away. They decide to go back to the city of Imos. And Mary, when she arrived at the tomb, she saw two angels and she didn't she did not recognize that they were angels and they start to speak with him if you took the body of my lord let me know where you put it so i can go or maybe the pharisees the principles so they uh, the pharisees who like concerned about the followers of Jesus do something with his body. And Mary, the, the two Mary and the other disciples also thought that they stole the body of Jesus. So in the conversation from Mary's and the angels, they say, if you are you or if you are anybody else, and the angel says, why are you crying? And why are you looking for the death among the... Uh, uh, why are you looking for the life, the living one, among the death, the dead ones? Because they were following the, the history and the reasoning. Because in the head of Mary, their, the prophecy of his resurrection didn't, didn't play any role yet. They were living with Jesus, they were listening to Jesus. He was saying he was son of God, the one that made marvelous things the multiply bread and fish, but the revelation of God didn't enter their brain and their minds because until then they know Jesus as a, a man, a human side of Jesus. So they were looking for the body of Jesus, the one that came from heaven, but that made himself a man, the, 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 the human Jesus. And in the conversation with the angels, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Why are you looking for the one that is alive among the dead? Until Jesus showed himself personally. And when Jesus talked to her, she called woman first and they don't understand. And then when after they ask where you put the body of my Lord, let me know. Then Jesus present himself and call her by her name, Mary. At that moment, she looked at Jesus and she recognized because she heard the voice of Jesus calling her by her name. No more as someone without importance or any woman, but Jesus spoke with her directly by her name individually so jesus went inside her heart and spoke with her mary at that moment the revelation from god jesus revealed himself enter her heart so she recognizes and she answered him rabboni it's the it's you so it, how good it is when the man recognized Jesus in the revealed way. Because until then, the text that we read in Hebrews, that God spoke to the humankind through the prophets. In the Old Testament, to, through history and literary. But now, with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is revealing himself as a glorified God to speak with every and each one of us. And when God uses the revelation of Jesus no more, the historic, we understand why God has power 
and allow himself to speak directly with the man. God recognizes everyone is here. God knows you and he calls you by your name. When God wants to bless a man, he don't do in a bulky way. But he points the needy, the one that is holding the grudge, the one that has depression, the one that is about to kill himself. He takes from the multitude and he calls aside and say, Mary. Now take Mary's name from the text and apply your name to this conversation. How good it is to listen to the voice of Jesus and how good it is to listen how grateful it is to listen Jesus calling you by your name. Wow, he spoke with me. Jesus is alive. I didn't know that he could speak with me. I could imagine that he can speak marvelously like he's doing now. And this is how Jesus do. Mary was worried about the body of Jesus and Jesus was saying, there's no body. Go and talk to my body, talking about the, the community of disciples and followers. I'll go to my father, but I'll send, I'll go to my father, your father, your, your God, my father, my God. And in Matthew, before he go to the father, before he goes to Galilee, he says, before I go to Galilee, I'll find you all. I'll meet you all. So man, when he see Jesus in the history way, historic way, the main concern is where to carry the body of Jesus. I'll take Jesus with me. But when man knows the revelation God revealed in, in the life of Jesus, he will understand that it's not man that will take Jesus, but Jesus that will take us. Jesus will conduct us. Jesus will take us to heaven. It's Jesus that going to make man encounter the Father. It's Jesus that going to say, go to Galilee and I'll meet you there. Because the government is with Jesus. The blessing is with Jesus. Nobody conducts Jesus, but Jesus conducts everyone. He is the one that takes us to live marvelous moments in his presence. When men find the revelation of Jesus glorified, the one that died, but at the third day resurrected, rose again, conquering death, conquering everything for us. So when we see Jesus, when we meet Jesus, we leave everything behind. So this army that is full of defeat, so when you leave everything behind, when you leave the world and all the things of this world, you belong to an army of the, 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 the God, which is the host. Thank you. So now you start living a new lifestyle. So when the enemy spoke with Eve back in the Garden of Eve, what was the fruit that was given to to Eve. So I have tried this trap with you and you don't fall for that, right? Before everybody yell, apple, pear. So when the serpent deceit Eve and the disobedience brought all the consequences. The, the serpent used the woman to deceitful and to bring disobedience. That's what the enemy of our souls does. He uses the natural man to conduct others to the life of defeat. But now God is using a woman to announce the true about Jesus the truth about Jesus 
So as the enemy used the woman in the beginning of all things, now God uses Mary and say, Go and announce to the disciples. Tell Peter how much I love him and I'm alive. So let Peter know. The same way that the, the adversary of our lives made a woman to fall. Now Jesus used a woman to lift it up and to announce that he is alive, that he wants to live in the, the hearts of men and the souls of men. And he wants to provide an encounter with God the Father. And the role of the church is exactly to announce, not the, the mayor and not the Assembly of God or Baptist Church. I'm talking about the faithful church. They know that they need to announce that Jesus is alive. And his body glorified is the church. And is within this body, all of us, we will enter the mansions of heavens. When Jesus comes back, we will receive new bodies, glorified bodies. We will enter the presence of God. This is the blessing. God has spoken through the prophets by the, in the Old Testament, in the lyrics, in the letter. And now Jesus is revealing the mystery, the secret of salvation in Jesus. When man and accepting his heart to listen to God's voice. Mary, look, it's me. And she answered, Rabboni, Rabbi, Master, Lord. It was a very respectful expression. To call him Rabbi, it was a very honored way to answer someone of the caliber of Jesus. So the man feel embraced by the Creator. When we listen to the voice of God, how good it is to listen to the voice of Jesus is a marvelous, it's a wonderful thing. Because he knows the level of our pain. And he knows you the same way that he knows me. He knows our suffering, our afflictions, our pain. He knows our need. And he knows exactly what we need. And, and what man needs is one thing only. I'll go to the Father. I'll go to my, my God and your God. It's there that we want to go. There's no other place that we desire more but in the presence of our Lord, our Creator. There's no other moment that can be more important than the moment to, that we, we get to know the revelation of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let's sing a song. At this moment, open your heart. Pedindo para que Deus possa confirmar a sua salvação. Pedindo para que Jesus possa te levar até uma experiência maravilhosa, marcante com Deus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brethren, if Jesus didn't reveal himself, if Jesus did not reveal himself to you and I, we couldn't see God the Father. The only one that can allow us, can connect us to God the Father, is Jesus. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is life. There's no other way for man to find the, God the Father unless if he opened his heart and to receive the revelation of Jesus. Mary talked to Peter. Why did Jesus mention Peter in that conversation? They were 12, 12 disciples. Peter denied Jesus for three times. So Jesus says, Peter, before the rooster sound, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, oh, no way. I'm very strong. I'm very defined. Nobody going to change my mind. So three times, Peter denied the Savior. And after he resurrected, one of the first sentences, go to Peter and tell him that I am alive. Showing the love of God, the forgiveness. We all will fail one day, one moment. But our failures, if we receive the forgiveness from God through Jesus, nothing will separate us and nothing will hold us in this world. Because the love of God is exactly the, the vehicle, the the, the thing that make the mankind to recognize his sinful way and to turn himself to God. The love of God is inexplicable. But he can live, he can feel it. Come, come enjoy this in the presence of, the God, of God. Come receive the forgiveness and the love and the life that is in Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let's stand. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Lord, we glorify your name. We bless you for this love. We glorify you as for one day you have rescued us from, from this world. We could be in many other places. But we chose the best part. Thank you for the privilege and for your son that died on the cross for us. And we believe that he is alive. That's why we thank you for, for this grace, for this love in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Brethren, tonight the Lord is delivering many hearts, taking away any feelings of defeat, and He's calling you to be part of the eternal army, the celestial army, so we can be part of this elected nation called by God and to experience the victories that God has provided. So open your heart and let the Lord reveal himself to you. The Lord has shown that he would like to operate in a man's heart and he is give heed to the things of this world, the historical things that people speak with him about Jesus, but that is not providing to him the real knowledge of Jesus. So what you need is to feed by the Word of God, the living Word of God, not the simply the Bible, but everybody has the Bible, but there is a revelation within the Bible. Even in the cell phones, you can open, you can read, but what man needs, what you need, my brother, my sister, is to know the revelation, the living Word of God. The living Word of God is the action of God in your life. So give up on things that by tradition was transferred to you and come discovering the, the mysteries, the revealing mysteries of God, of the kingdom of God. Lord revealed also a woman that is sad, very sad in her heart, and this is compromising her performance in the spiritual way. And the Lord is talking to you because tonight in the spiritual way there was an operation of the Holy Spirit and everything that was kneeling or impeaching that God can enter and operate inside your heart. God has power. But God will not break your heart. He'll wait for you to open. He will knock, but he will not force. But he will wait for you to give him an opening. And he is giving you an opportunity to know the true salvation through Jesus Christ. This is what generates life. The heart biologically has a very important role to pump the blood so the salvation in Jesus also will, will generate life not for this world but for eternal life so the gifts we transmitted the message, the service everything you heard if you need an assistance at the end of the service we will we'll be here to pray with you to assist you this is the, the desire of God so we all live here closer to God. Let's close our eyes and pray. God, receive our service. So your word, the praises, the songs, the prayers, everything that was done tonight that your Holy Spirit can find a place in their hearts so your word can stay operating, blessings, taking away all the doubts, all the disbelief and all the questioning that might exist inside anybody's hearts. Operate salvation. For the praise of your name. So many names can be written in the book of life tonight. 
we like to praise you for the call, for our opportunity to, to know Jesus in a revealed way. The Jesus that died but is resurrected and he is alive among us. Thank you for the opportunity, for the call. And we ask you now that you can provide a week of blessings. So do, during this week, we can have even more experiences with you. So we can be target of the ministration of the angels, your angels. So we can experience your love, your mercy. So we can be victorious. One more week in your presence. Bless your people's health physically and also the professional life of your servants and in our in our lips we can have the praise and the gratitude in the name of Jesus and in your name we say that the marvelous grace of our Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore amen the church may be seated. We finish the service and we say peace of the Lord to the, the brothers and sisters watching through Zoom. There will be deacons and workers to pray for you, pray with you, and to assist you. And here, now, presently, if you need an assistance, just give us a sign with your hand and we're going to be praying with you. Uh, can you project the the pictures of the the remodeling of the new church as we can assist we're going to present some of the the remodeling that we have in the new church so let's pray so the lord can operate deliverances and victory in this new church that we are preparing